Yep. There goes my life. Hey guys, it's seven o'clock Pacific. It's pouring rain on the West Coast and they say it never rains in Southern California. But for tonight, welcome to Cool Toys live stream. As you know, from COVID and uh, coronavirus and shelter in place and all these crazy things, it's really hard to shoot a show. Most of the production here in Southern California is shut down. And we have been working on Cool Toys, what I'm calling version two, essentially season three, but full length episodes for over seven months and we decided to stop waiting and go live. So tonight we're live here in uh, the basic of basic studios with just the two of us and my wife running the uh, camera and the gear to make sure you can hear it all. Um, 24 episodes in the past, a million views. It has been an absolute ride and we hope to make it better for you. With full length episodes, instead of talking about one thing each week, we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff and we'll have fun um, in this case, we've got live chat, um, and if you could click on the right screen on your side so we could see if there's anybody chatting and then Q&A it, click on the white section below right there, and then click on uh, chat on the left of that screen up oh, right there. So that way we can see if, hey, Stephen Farr, hey. how you doing? So, Dr. Uh, Farr. And uh, yeah, hey. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. So it's uh, live streaming and we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff and the show is about all the cool toys that are out there. Um, it started when I built the home theater and the home automation business in early 2000s and a customer said, man, you've got all the cool toys. And that became a blog, which became now the show. And I've since sold off that business, but I'm still very involved in the world of tech and all the fun stuff that's out there. And I had a blast finding even non-techy things like the bug assault. That was absolutely fun to, to uh, and we'll talk about that in a second here. But um, the, uh, the show is, is going to be different. Um, I thought I'd been doing really well, and I got a new neighbor. If you watch the intro, you got to meet Josh already. <laughs> and uh, someone, who I won't name, <coughs> decided that... I needed help with the show because I was just too boring. It just became one of those things that, uh, you know, when I looked at it, I just thought to myself, dude, who the hell died and made you the cool king? I, I, okay, I'm not the cool king. That's the yoga <laughs> guy that lives two blocks over there with the Hemi. Well, cool so, king or king of cool, cool toys, whatever you want to call exactly. it. Just how did you get to where you're at? Well, let's see. I built the home theater business, built the store, got the trademark, got sued over the trademark, changed the trademark, got a new trademark, and here we are. I own it. <laughs> That's how I got to be his job. <laughs> well, it, it's still one of those things where, you know, watching some of the videos, and for those of you watching at home, I did sit down and watch all 24 of his prior episodes, and if you're looking for a cure for insomnia, this is your guy. But if you're looking for something that's a little more exciting and you're trying to figure out about a product, it needs a little bit more energy, because what I was actually seeing when I sat down and watched these videos is it was very similar to, how do I put this politely? Standing in line at the DMV versus watching paint dry. And so I'm hoping well, that as we take this to a new direction with the two of us, we'll be able to increase a little bit more of the energy with the show. You know, I think I've done a lot of cool stuff and had a lot of fun. I mean, let's take a look at the first clip here to show you what we did in the past for those of you that have never seen the show. Um, and the uh, clip here is just going through. This is the Bug Assault, one of my favorite toys. Salt, and you shoot bugs on food. You know, come on, look at that. Dead flies, salt shotgun, pump it, and go. It's just a kick. And then we went to the Jeeps, and actually the whole show started with the Jeeps. There's the old JK, um, and we've got the JLU, the newer LED taillights there, which we did replace on the old one. Here's the old JK headlights and the new JLU headlights. So we've gone through the JK series and the JL series, and here I got a little nerdy. I have to admit, that I did have a very strange connection to the Chevy Volt. We had two of them. We had the old one and the new one, and then the editor had an old one. So we decided to go Volt versus Volt and compare them, which uh, admittedly, we didn't really find a cool toy out of that. We found two cool cars, and then his wife showed up, and that was the cool toy for the day. So. You know, I will concede that some of the stuff that you did in the first couple of seasons was actually interesting to watch. But let's be honest, man. It's boring as hell. 
Oh, come on, a million people didn't think it was boring, boring, but yeah, it, it probably could have been a little bit more energetic as the term well, my uh, agent used. To drive that point home, let's so take a look sorry. at this Jeep highlight reel that you made. All right, so this is the uh, second Jeep, or actually the first one fixing a couple things. Headlights, putting so we in see, a headliner. Yeah, headlights and a headliner. This is my point. Like, what part of this is making you want to stay awake and watch this? And let's be honest, this is probably why I drink so many energy drinks, just hanging out with you talking about headliners. But you got to have quiet, even in a Jeep. It's nice to be on the road. If you're going to make those long trips, you know, good headlights, good thing. Plus, the halos were cool looking. i got to say, I don't care what you think about them. As a Jeep guy, the well, halo headlights were a really What happened cool in your edition. first video you did? I put them in upside down. <laughs> Which I think was more energetic than just watching you talk about them, to be honest. That was funny because going down the road at the night test, I said we'll do a night test at the end of the video, and I went down and did the night test, and the low beams were lighting the trees up way up here and nothing ahead of me, and I went to the high beams and I got the tops of the trees. So it took me a while to figure that out. But um, So the first couple seasons did have some cool stuff in it, but now yeah. we're, we're moving in a different direction, taking this to a two-man show. That way there is an alternate alternative viewpoint to it so hopefully uh, it'll step up the energy and hopefully i can keep you in check so you don't doze off yeah but you know the upside down lights thing isn't the only thing that you know we did it was there's a lot of other stuff in there that was pretty cool you also did that video of docking stations that didn't even work well that that's true yeah so i i uh, had to learn the hard way that there's a difference between a docking station and an egpu for a mac <laughs> one's 200 bucks and i thought i could get away with it because it looked like it did all the same thing but it just didn't work so i'm guessing as we move forward into the next season we're probably going to start up with a jeep yeah as a matter of fact <laughs> right away in the new jk the jlu the new one um one of the biggest problems that i had with both of them is the antenna. It's got this big crazy metal whip antenna right next to the windshield. So when you're going through the car wash and the thing whips around wait, and hits wait, wait, wait. The, I mean car when, wash? You're, when you're rock crawling and the tree hits the windshield the, wait, did the, you took the Jeep through a car wash? Yeah, I did. It's a Jeep, man. I like clean stuff. You've seen my office and my garage. It's floor. true, I can't speak to his O C D personally because I watched him polish the floor in his garage after I opened a beer and he thought it sprayed too much. I like clean stuff, and this is the guy who keeps his garage looking like something out of junkyard finds. So it's a little less stressed that way. Let's look at the Jeep. This is the twenty. So we've got the old thirty-six inches. This is a brand uh, new factory antenna, and Jeep. you can see and there's a lot of corrosion the, uh, in here. So we've got to use a, uh, so I found a little twenty-two caliber rifle brush cleaner, to scrub this out completely of, uh, in order to get the new. Oil. Shorter and antenna in. It was just no way to get the uh, stainless steel the stainless basin. It was too hard given the aluminum and how corroded it is. And part of that's from the beach, but um, this Jeep's only one year old. So, so far we've had a lot of fun so with it, but this one is one little place to concern yourself Jeep, with that it's uh, one year old and that corroded. But anyway, we were finally able to get it in there, get this new little shorty antenna on there. It looks way better. You know, safe for the car wash, forget whatever Josh complains about. And, um, Look and, at that. Nice, um, clean, short, it simple, looked terrible. and uh, more importantly, and so it actually works. We found this company, Antenna Source, and they swore that little stubby was going to um, fix everything and keep the Jeep with the, all the same signal and all the same stereo, but looking that much cooler. And let me show you the difference of this video here. This is just a quick clip to show you the difference in height. Look at the silver antenna sitting right behind that little stubby. and. You know, I'll have to admit I was a little skeptical when Antenna Source said, yep, that will work. And you'll notice the surfboard behind me is the same one that's sitting right behind us right now um, in that video. So I was skeptical it was going to work. But the question was, is it cool? It is cool. It looks way better. And did it work? It did work, and you should know. Let's watch the evidence video now of why we think somebody should know whether this worked or not. All right, so I cheated yesterday. <laughs> so after we got done shooting in the studio, I took the Jeep for a drive and uh, went up into Los Angeles to Sunset Studios to do some work. And the little antenna so far is a big win. Um, first thing, I'll give you a quick insert here. Every single channel came up in HD, which it did not do with the factory antenna. Um, it's pretty corroded though, so kind of crappy, and I wonder if that has something to do with the factory antenna or if it's just the antenna itself is not that great. Uh, maybe there's just too much corrosion and it wasn't getting a good 
contact. Yeah, it's hard to say from the factory because I've had it, but from day one, the day that this Jeep got delivered, only two of the list that you're seeing all the HD channels on had HD. Now they're all coming in HD and multiple channels so I can scroll through all of the digital backup channels, which is its second level of reception. So, so far, Antenna Source is winning on this one. So there it is. The evidence was you were there. You saw the HD <laughs> channels. You actually heard the radio work all the way down to our little surf track. Yeah, to, uh, but I don't Swamis. even remember. I think I may have dozed off just listening to you talk. <sighs> so anyway, we went all the way to Swami's. K Rock lasted way longer than it used to. So yes, Antenna Source, you get the Cool Toys Award for the day. Um, you have made a little stubby antenna that keeps up with that giant, ugly factory antenna. So I give you the the uh, win for that one. Um, and. We're going to go a lot farther than just the Jeeps, though. We're going to go do a lot of stuff this season, and it goes beyond that. We're going to have a lot of fun. In fact, right after that video, we went out and shot another one. That's true. We did. We uh, took a little drive out to the desert. We did. And ended up out at the uh, Thermal Club, so let's take a quick look at that this video. Is a, this is a place we hope that we're going to do a lot more shooting, and they'll let us come back and play. So the, the Thermal Club, if you're not familiar with it, they uh, have over 400 acres of track front property as well as a playground which incorporates three different tracks that they can combine into a single track and if you look closely at some of the housing out there you'll see that some of those are actually directly on the track and the windows on the lower level actually give you a view of the track from the lower level of the house and still having a balcony which is an excellent place to party with your friends while you're actually watching the track they also have a paddock with some pads where you can spin some donuts and blow out your tires if you feel like burning some rubber out there it's it's really an excellent place to take uh, any of your hot rods or race cars like this guy in his new Mercedes doing 150 plus so fast we couldn't even hold the camera on him and then we got a ride and uh... that was the beauty of taking this trip is, you know it would have been a whole lot better had the camera crew actually shown up so I didn't have to sit in the back of this BMW drift car trying to get car sick trying to hold the camera steady well if you didn't get the double carne asada extra spicy burrito for lunch 20 minutes earlier, we probably wouldn't have had as much trouble holding your lunch down. Says the guy who ate half a salad 15 minutes before. Well, I kind of knew what was next. <laughs> I did plan ahead. I've got a little time in race cars. I guess that's something that's new to you. Though it is fun going out there and going around the track in any type of a race car. Drift cars are particularly fun, especially when the, the head driving instructor is giving you a personal tour yeah, of the so track. Notice Dominique's doing this. Nailing the brakes, nailing the throttle, going sideways with his hands off the wheel, describing the course. So we had an absolute blast with the folks at Thermal Club and our hosts, uh, True Speed Autosport. So Tyler Tadovic, thanks, brother. Um, and that's why we've got Tyler's poster sitting back here. The guy's been a good friend for many years, and hopefully we'll get to spend a lot more time out there at the track. Um, and that's just part of the new toys we're going to go play with so so a lot of the stuff as we take the show into a new direction comes down to what type of stuff we're gonna display on the next season moving forward and yep. some of that stuff comes down to whether or not uh, it's going to be approved for us to play with that's true which begs the question are we still going to be allowed to do surfboards well can you get any more surfboards probably not without consulting a paralegal or a divorce attorney but it's worth an effort. I'm in the same boat, so surfboard stay. And in fact, we have. Um, We're not going to do any more wax replacement tests, though. That's about what I was going to say. Well, yeah. Dude, the so last time I rode your board, which I think is sitting up behind us. That one. Not only were the fins in backwards, but it completely stripped my chest of chest hair. So if you watch the wax replacement, we did the verse attraction, hex attraction. This is the Bruce Jones right here that has the hex attraction on it, and Josh did surf it. He did show me that I had the fins in backwards. Um, and it does go a little faster with the fins going the right way. So there is some <laughs> hydrodynamics to those things. Um, FCS does a nice job, another local Huntington Beach company. Um, but that said, uh, nose guards, something that I put on every one, I, take, I actually took it for granted, have never really put a test to uh, nose guard just because I like them. I can drop the board when I go jump in the shower, rinse off, and I don't really care if it hits the pavement because the board doesn't get dinged. And when I was ordering some new nose guards, Dave, the owner of Surfco, said, hey, I saw your hex attraction thing. We have this stuff called wax mat. So according to the rules, I bought it. So we have no ties to Surfco. 
as soon as we can get a couple of surfboards um, clean, I don't want to, we've already stripped all the wax off all of my boards and um, I got too much cake on mine. I'm not I won't tell you how many, but I um, have enough boards since my wife's here running the camera. <laughs> I won't run around and count them, but there are no boards that don't already have traction decking on them. So I'd like to find two new ones, if anybody knows where some can show up here, um, and get the wax mat on. We got the wax mat. If you watch the intro video, that's actually the package that was delivered to Josh that he brought to me. So very excited about that. Um, but... Something we probably ought to talk about since there's a, I see an MD online here, in addition to some other people. <laughs> and Dr. Farr might be questioning the whole yeah. social distancing yeah, we're thing right now. It's supposed to be social distancing and we got an MD watching. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm going to let Josh explain why uh, we are still technically complying with the social distancing rules uh, so, in light of a lot of things. And Steve, you know, and everybody else who doesn't, Josh's <laughs> wife just had a new baby. Yeah, that's correct. And as you can see, we are distancing ourselves relatively far enough apart to not worry about that. But even still, the fact that I did have a new baby, I had originally planned to have some family come out and help me with it. But uh, Scott and his wife, Kelly, have acted as surrogate family for me because of the whole uh, COVID-19 thing. And when my wife went into labor, she went in a few weeks early. Scott and Kelly have been helping us out with the kids ever since. So Anything I've been exposed to at work has caused them to be exposed to everything that I've and, brought home with me. And his boss wasn't real happy when she found out that I was being exposed to that and running out around the country flying jets. So I got 14 days in quarantine. And if you're really, really, really bored while you're sheltering in place, you can watch my last three, 13 quarant streaming episodes. If you're having trouble falling asleep. Yeah, and I'll admit to you, even <laughs> I was bored doing those. But there were two that were fun. The other 11, yeah, yeah they were yeah. I was just bored talking to the camera, my mom, and some guy named Your Mom, which I think was... <laughs> that was really your mom, dude. No. My mom is Muddy Jib. I know that. And so does Art Tabata, who's also watching. So <laughs> Art can vouch for me that my mom was there because he knows he's... Your mom was so, there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway. So bottom line is we're, we're part of the same family sector. So the, the fact that we're not wearing masks right now as we're talking to each other is because we've already been exposed to everything each other has been exposed to on a daily basis just by nature of them helping me out. With Things that you kids. can get by touching hands and other stuff, not other kind of exposure. <laughs> let's clear that up here. But let's clear that yeah. up. Yeah, not that we're kind of exposure. We're not that personal. Yeah, we're, not that, we're not familial if you want to know. I do not know him as they say in a biblical sense. <laughs> so, um, but all that said, now we got to go to the serious thing because you are a doc. Um, masks. It, the CDC says we ought to be wearing them. Your opinion of going out in public? Yes, no, maybe. You know, I think it does help significantly with reducing some of the risk of exposure. And uh, since the CDC, as well as multiple health organizations, have made the recommendation for masks, it is a, a very valid thing to do. And then right before this, you actually did a, a quick public service spot for telehealth to, to get people to not even go to see the doctor just to get some better distancing. Yeah, so Kathy Coakley, who is one of the main medical personnel for the Vans medical team, as well as owner and operator of Coast Physical Therapy, had uh, you know tapped us for helping her out for creating some awareness for doing the telehealth. And telehealth is a big, it's a big step forward for the medical community because it, not only does it protect the patient from all the stuff that we're exposed to as a healthcare provider, but it protects the healthcare provider from being exposed to anything well, that the patients are bringing. Even in. other patients in the waiting room. Correct. Um, so doing telehealth is a, is a big step in the right direction moving forward. And there's a lot of things that you don't need to physically be present for nowadays because we can do everything through video and telephone calls. Very cool. So with the masks, all right, so we're supposed to have masks. So if we go out, I made a mask. <laughs> I followed the CDC guidelines and I Let's made... Let's see this thing. A mask. Well, other than looking like an angry clown... You know, it, it does serve the purpose, and if you watch the videos from our governor, Gavin Newsom, it, he does recommend making homemade masks. But with that said, I think I won't up you on this one, no. because I took it a step from the safety point <laughs> to a functional standpoint. And let me show you what no, I got here. No, wait a minute. We just got to know, we have two choices with this. We can have fun with them, or we can make fun of them, and we chose, we decided this was important enough we'd have fun with them instead of making fun of it. We do want you to take this seriously, social distancing and wearing a mask, but... That is clearly men's underwear. <laughs> You're correct. At one point in time, this was actually a pair of my boxer briefs. And yes, in retrospect, <laughs> I probably should have used a clean pair when I made the mask. Oh, but I mean, as you'll see, is awesome. this mask is made out of the sport wick material, so it does wick away moisture from the mouth, in addition to protecting you from respiratory droplets. 
But as an added bonus, it still maintains the flat. So if I want to drink something through a straw, I can still maintain some level of protection. Although this taste is really getting to me, so. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so while he's changing his underwear, I'm going to tell you about a, uh, one of my side projects is Warriors on Track, and we'll uh, get to spend some time with them this season, too. Uh, I'm on the board. Warriors on Track is a uh, nonprofit that is aimed at helping veterans with PTSD and traumatic brain injury. If you're in Orange County, California, and you go by the Heroes Hall, you'll see a couple of helmets that are blown to smithereens. The guys that occupied those two helmets when they were blown up are two of the board members and two of the founders, so Thomas Woods uh, and John. Um, and these guys recovered fully from TBI uh, and have decided to put their life to helping other vets. And we do that through motorsports, which is a great thing given that, you know, I like cars, obviously, and fast cars and fun cars. So. Um, we got to go out and let me show you this. We took a booth out with supercars by the sea right before the uh, whole thing kicked in. And, you know, we raised funds and raised awareness. And I hate to say awareness because we really are about raising money and actually bringing the vets in out of the field, taking them out of the drug dealing behind the dumpsters at the VA and really helping them. And you can just see this lineup of Porsches at the beach and what a great day. And um, the, the American Legion came out next to us and hung out. Uh, and there were some absolutely fantastic cars out there to see. So, in fact, there's a couple on here that are going to come up that uh, you just can't... I, I almost can, can't believe that people built this, but Warriors on Track, there's the car that we put out. Kevin Woods, we had a donor uh, loan us his 911. Kevin Woods took it out to Laguna Seca and won in the GT class with the Warriors on Track uh, livery on it. It just looked fantastic and winning the race for the team was great. Um, this thing showed up, the halo headlights that I like, in a Jeep rock crawler with a Corvette motor. So now Mr. drives a taco and thinks it's cool over here. You know, being a Jeep guy, this is pretty, pretty cool crawler. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get any good inside shots, but if you look at those hydraulic lines right there, he's got individual levers for each wheel so he can spin them or loosen them up as he needs to to get over the rocks. I mean, this thing was just a phenomenal piece of work and, and we will hopefully spend more time with supercars by the sea uh, out there with both Warriors on Track and with us here at Cool Toys. Look at this Porsche. This is one that automatically wins a Cool Toys award because I know if I came home and told my wife that I just spent 20,000 bucks on some gold inlets on my 911, well, oh, good. That gets a star right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will give you that the stack injection looks pretty cool, and dealing with the Warriors on track is a it's a very noble cause. And it's, it's know, a lot of fun, and I hope that we'll get to play with them a lot this season. We'll and fully go back out that. On the Enduros because um, one of the cool features of it is the guys that get through the program. We have a, a national dealer chain, and I'm not sure I can use the name yet. I got to get a release <laughs> from them for this, but. They have agreed that all the guys that get through the program, they will offer a job as a mechanic. So if they've learned a crew chief for us at Warriors on Track or drive the car and um, Hoonigan Racing, I can say this, is helping us build a uh, hand lever control car so we can have our paraplegic guys um, drive the car, which is outstanding. I mean, to have a guy that's, that's given so much to us uh, and being a vet myself, it really is a, a cool way for me to give back and I hope that we get to have a lot of fun with them on the track. Um, it, it, uh, it's just something that, that we can't overlook how, I mean, how much fun it is for us, how much fun it is for them and the therapeutic value of bringing these guys out, giving them the camaraderie, giving them the teamwork and getting on with, with yeah, just uh, keeping life. them going just so yeah, they don't yeah, fall exactly. into a dark place. Yep. So exactly. as we're moving forward with the new season and, uh, this being our first inaugural episode for the introduction, I think it's a good point to take a quick uh, pause and make sure that we don't have any questions coming in from some of our viewers out there, just so they understand that so we actually are doing this screen? live. And so, and let's see the taster. Oh brother. Is that your speedo? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> from the top down, Dr. Farr. Hey, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, T.O. I don't think that was yo. a Speedo. Speedos don't have a Yeah, the Speedo, was no, this was not. Uh, no, that was, those are just, yeah. That no. was not a Speedo. Uh, no, I actually, didn't have a man slot, so it's clearly. I not, wish I could uh, <laughs> tell you where I got them, but we all know the truth that my wife does all the shopping, so I wherever she bought that. I would assume know. Costco because she did buy them in bulk. Yeah, because he needs them. So. And uh, Art, oh brother, yep, how's it going? 
and then yeah <laughs> the taste yeah <laughs> i'll I, probably be hearing about that for yeah. pretty much the rest of my life well i got my first item for the new show i got a way to get the taste out of your mouth so other than the masks and warriors on track which again is a, a very noble cause if anybody feels like throwing some money their way what other stuff do you have in store for us i got a brand new popcorn machine popcorn machine popcorn machine Popcorn machine. Popcorn machine. All right. Come on. Here's you, know, you remember me talking about how boring this guy can be? Yeah. So, guys, here's the thing. 99 bucks. This is the problem with sitting at home with too much time on your hand. It's 99 bucks, and you get... You get look, one of the... You get to look stupid on camera <laughs> trying to get a box out of a box. And you get to recreate the worst-selling flavor from Jelly Belly. Buttered popcorn. But look at this. A real popcorn machine. Put the oil in, get the popcorn out. 99 bucks. Did your wife approve of this purchase? No, she didn't. That's the best part. Well, so before you go down that road for that extra fifth star, what I'm going to say is that I'm pretty sure my grandmother has one of these. <sighs> I'm telling you. Guys, get a popcorn machine. Go to Costco. Get a gallon of jalapenos. Sliced jalapenos. Take one scoop. <laughs> Throw it in there with the oil while you're cooking the popcorn. I don't know if I would and recommend it. If your wife's that. nose hair doesn't singe on the way in the door, you did it wrong. I'd probably hold off until the quarantine's over, or at least until people stop hoarding toilet paper <laughs> before I'd go with the gallon of jalapenos. <laughs> well, if you've got your own, maybe if you've got your own toilet paper hoard already, <laughs> you're good to go. Or if you did like Craig Rails back and got a bidet, then you don't need to worry about the toilet paper, and the jalapeno popcorn will nail it. Yeah. So, so I, I'm thinking I did pretty good there. I think it's a good deal for the popcorn machine, but as far as calling it a cool toy, I'm still agree to disagree stance. Uh, I don't uh, think I would still say that uh, you know the wife wouldn't approve of that because, in all honesty, my wife eats a lot more popcorn than I do, just because I don't like that stuff getting jammed in my teeth. Yeah, wait till I get my first batch of jalapeno popcorn, and we'll see if your wife likes it, and if you go, all right, this is cool. <laughs> Like so I said, we'll not until time. toilet paper is a regular item at the store. If you guys want to buy one of these things and tell us what you think, go for it. They didn't pay us. This is not an affiliated. We'll see. We've got to do all the uh, um, influencer stuff now. We're not, We're not paid, paid for, this, for this by any of these people. We actually pay for the stuff. Nobody's influencing anything. And uh, if they want to send us more, yeah, we might take it and give it out to the audience. But that's it. Um, but yeah, I, okay. I'll give you a maybe on that one. Good. All right. We got a maybe. That's the start. <laughs> so I was going to give it the thumbs up, but apparently not. All right. So what else you got in store for us? So, the next toy, um, it is, you know, cars. Half of the show is cars. And um, I've had a couple old cars, and I've had a couple new cars, old Mustangs. I've been a Mustang guy my whole life. Um, I had an old Mercedes SL that's now sitting in France. It was just a fun car to drive. It was in a couple of the Huntington Beach parades. So I went out, and I started looking for bottom-of-the-market old cars, and I found this. 2002 SLK, a little supercharged convertible that has everything working. So everything on the car, you push a button, the top goes in the trunk, it's got a supercharger, it's 250 horsepower, and eh, maybe 230 now because it's a little older. Um, but it goes like gangbusters, you can spin the tires all day long, and just a boatload of fun. And it can't help but have a smile on your face driving around in that thing. So you're telling me for your cool toy, you bought an overpriced Miata that uh, you nope. can actually fit in. Yeah, I can fit in it because it's not a Miata, and I only paid four grand, and that included uh, an alignment. But what part of that alignment? actually draws attention to you? Oh, I don't. Other than when you run it in a parade. Well, that car wouldn't run in the parade. That's just, that's too, this thing's just too much fun to do donuts <laughs> in. <laughs> But yet, but, uh, any of the maintenance is going to be overpriced, plus all of the parts have to be imported from out of the country. You drive a taco. Everything there is Chinese and Japanese. Come on. But it's readily available in the country. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, let's agree to disagree on that one. And Bye. let me show you what I picked up for the show. So go ahead and take a look at this one. All right. So what we have Another here... Another truck. <laughs> it's it's more, worse than a taco. It's more It functional. doesn't even have a bed or a hood. It's, it's pieces of a truck. What we got is a 1940s rat rod that's powered by a 1954 Chrysler New Yorker 331 Hemi, which for all the Hemi buffs out there, that 331 was the original model of a Hemi, and they are relatively hard to come by. 
But when you look at what's, what else is going on, that uh, grill on there is from a 1947 commercial truck, and it's mounted to a 47 Ford frame that's been shortened about 10 inches to accommodate it. The part that the wife especially dislikes is the fact that I have a line lock on it and can do pro stock burnouts in my driveway, which, by the way, yeah. lowers your property value. <laughs> it did, and I already saw the burnout marks. <laughs> so the neighbors complained. I happened to not be home. I was out flying on a trip. So, and then I got the word from the guy that lives across the street that looks, works at home and looks right at <laughs> your driveway all day long. <laughs> His wife may not like it, but he absolutely does. So what I'm hearing from you is I win. How do you figure this? You got a car, you got a pickup truck that doesn't pieces have a bed. Pieces of a yeah, pickup truck. you got truck. pieces of a pickup truck that don't even have a bed. All it can do is waste tires and gas. And it's got a wrong What's motor. What's not cool about it that? A, it's got an old land yacht motor part in a truck. <laughs> Two pieces of a Ford with a Chrysler in the middle. What the? It, no. Well, how much did you end up paying for yours? Under four grand with everything done. So where are you Fair at? Uh, right about 18 after I put a new cam, lifters, did some other maintenance for it, as well as uh, cleaned a few things up okay. so it wasn't leaking all over my driveway. So you're claiming you got a five-star truck? Absolutely. And you think I have a three-star? At best. So... Two stars difference. So we need a tiebreaker. Fourteen which grand means is seven thousand bucks a star. It's totally I can think worth of it. A lot better ways to spend. Oh yeah. Totally worth it. I am not buying. I mean, if we were to park side by side in a parking lot, which one's going to garner more attention? Oh, Are people no going to come up to your car and Everybody's say, "Hey, man, nice truck. car"? Everyone's going to come up and approach me, wondering if I'm a a psychopath, b a full on redneck, <laughs> or c just a classic car enthusiast. Uh, no. I'll let the audience decide which is which. It ain't going to be C, that's for sure. There's nothing <laughs> classic about that. That thing is just it. But All right. Well, I, I, I'm not buying it. We're going to have to get a different boat on this. Well, so luckily, you know, I have a, a special clip that I didn't tell you about. That uh, Let's take a look at this, and we'll get the first reaction from okay. the kids. Hey, Lily, what do you think of my new car? That's the worst car ever. Yeah, what do you think of Scott's new car? So, so clearly I win. Wait, kids don't have any bias. She liked my car. Which is the whole point. She's not a wife. Doesn't count. <laughs> At some point she will most likely be. All right, wait, anybody in the audience voting on this one yet? Let's see if anybody in the audience has on, a, guys, a say. Take? SLK versus the Rat Rod. D, all the above. Go, Steven. <laughs> all right, Steven doesn't count. Jiffy Pop for life. <laughs> Tio doesn't count. <laughs> Actually, Tio does count because he proves my point about your queasy. Yeah, Jiffy Pop. Oh, God. All right. Uncle. All right. Okay. I give up. So, so as we move forward with the social distancing thing, I got to ask, when are we going to have a chance to talk about video games? Well, we can talk about it now. So we, one of the things we set up when we talked about doing the show before the distancing and when we could have a real crew and have multiple cameras and all this stuff and do game capture and all these things was testing gaming headsets. Um, my background in audio video, I have uh, what they call a golden ear so I can hear room sounds and noises and bounces and the truth of life is you can have a 5.1 system in the right room and it will do just as good as a 7.1 or an 11.1 or and there's some argument about Dolby Atmos because the ceiling speakers do give something different in how you feel it in your whole body. But that said, we only have two ears. And gaming, the part that intrigues me a little bit is the audio quality. You know, 4K games are out now. That's pretty standard. It, it, it's just the visuals are incredible. They're pretty realistic. The audio quality, though, has always been something that lacked. But now with good headsets, and Dolby now has an Atmos headset available, yeah. we decided we're going to test headsets. And you've got some pretty wild ones. Yeah, I've got uh, you know, a couple of Turtle Beach models as well as the Arctis Pro Wireless. And uh, one of the, my favorites is the Bose noise canceling for whenever the kids get a little too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Tune out your own kids in your house while you're playing their video games. Sweet! So when we actually get to the, the stage where we're testing the, the headsets and video games, uh, we'll definitely have a shootout on which headset works the best for the ad, actual gamer as well as blocking out the kids when they get too loud. Yeah, so there's, it, and it's, it, uh, admittedly I'm not a gamer. I grew up, um, I started programming and, and breaking games and testing games for a little company called uh, Sierra Online back in the day. 
Um, King's Quest. If none of you ever Larry, it. Um, <laughs> it's some of the other fun games, but and you know, uh, Ken and Roberta. Thank you for the opportunity at the time, and, and uh, my my uh, teacher Bob Kernigan that got me the job while I was trying to struggle through high school at a place that I didn't belong. Um, what was the but, other epic game of the generation? Was it Leisure or something? Uh, Leisure Suit Larry. Yes. Yeah. Greatest game ever made. Yeah. So te- all text. <laughs> you walk into a bar. I sit at the bar. So it was pretty funny to work on that stuff. But I had a great time doing it. And for whatever reason, when I went in the military, the whole video gaming thing never followed me. And a lot of guys did. Um, so you convinced me to get a game. So I went and uh, didn't get the full picture that there's only one gaming system. So I went and bought an Xbox. Which there's nothing wrong with the Xbox, but any gamers will tell you. Well, I should clarify that. Any real gamers. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll I, tell you I like the Xbox. It had a great 4K DVD player, but... It was built more around a home theater system and giving you awesome graphics, yep. but some of the, the... Well, and originally when the Xbox was started, it had a built-in media player, which was kind of cool. So yeah. you, could re- you could record DVDs. And then they didn't get the proper licensing like Request and Kaleidoscape did. And even Kaleidoscape has since disappeared. And Request is really, I think, gone. I haven't been able to get a hold of Scott in a couple years. So I'm assuming that Request is gone. My Request servers actually died, which is killing me. Because now I have to take a DVD out, put it in the DVD player. (laughs) And Microsoft really was looking at that bigger media picture versus gaming. which, And that's why I didn't mind keeping it when I ended up going with the PS4 because... You had a PS4, my brother had a yep. PS4, and his brother had a PS4. So I my was out there actually has one. both, but most of the games that we play are PS4 exclusive yeah. titles. And so. The only way to play head-to-head and use the headsets... Which was, was the biggest game. drawback when you're playing a cross-platform game is that the headsets won't let you chat, which is why we ended up making yeah. the Switch. Yep, so we will test the headsets in a future episode. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, the, the cool video games, and with social distancing, it really did give us an opportunity to... It, you know, and I wouldn't say for us social distancing, but because I play my brother who's in Portland, and you play your brother who's in Arizona. Yeah. Um, Which is know, a great way to stay social with people that are out of state. Yeah, you talk to your brother every day now because yeah. of it. And I, I wish I could say I was as good a brother and did that every day, <laughs> but, you know, we, we, I have to admit that I've been getting coached by Josh on how to play Rocket League, and I think I finally got good I enough. I don't know if I would say coached as much as I'd say schooled. Well, school, okay, I was getting schooled, and um, I finally got to where I could keep up with him in a game, so I was pretty happy, and uh, so we're, now we'll get to move forward and do the test. Yeah, so when you mentioned keeping up in a game, I should probably come clean at this point, and uh, I, let's just take a look at the video, and I'll explain why it, I say it's coming clean. But uh, I promise I'll go easy on you since this is one of your first times playing with us. Whatever you can think of Let's go ahead and X to auto join a team. It's, it's difficult to manage this. And, and uh, let's go ahead and play. That's the most important part. <laughs> you gotta use the boost, dude. So I got my butt kicked by a four year old. <laughs> Correct. Well, at least I almost kept up with him. But. Okay, so I clearly need more schooling, and you're fired. So I'm taking (laughs) resumes for a co-host, and I'm taking resumes for a uh, PS4 Rocket League coach. Uh, Although I think where we're going to go with this is we're going to end up having... You already have a steering wheel. I do. So I think we're going to need to go steering wheels, go driving games head-to-head, and Um, see if my skill on the track actually parlays into skill in the game and see if we're somewhat even there. Let's see what happens. So that, that can be a good thing. So we'll have some video gaming stuff. We're going to have cars. We're going to have surfboards. And, well, okay, maybe not in our popcorn makers, but <laughs> more things like the bug assaults and um, all, all kinds of things that we find are cool toys. And if you've got a cool toy, send it to us. If you think you've got cool toys you want to show off, buy a T-shirt, help the show. Um, it's... Uh, a lot of stuff. It's a lot of fun. So, um, so I think we're getting close to running out of time. I think it's a good time to check in with uh, our viewers and make sure that we don't have any yep. other questions pending. Space Quest. What's Space Quest? I'm not sure what Space Maybe he's talking about an old game. Was it, yeah. Is that like a 1940s video game art? <laughs> is that back in our day? Did hey, they even have TV young. back then? <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, you Dude, know, we had Pong. I'm kind Remember, of excited so about so the so video game. The big giant Atari thing? 
because <laughs> my generation is going to be the first generation hitting in a nursing home with video games, which Scott's going to find out in a few weeks when he gets there. <sighs> this is so wrong. You know what? He's going to be the guy pushing the chairs around. I'll be going, hey, Doc. Pushing? It's all going to be automated now. You're going to be in there. What are the, I don't remember what those are they're called, the, uh, the electric wheelchairs. Scooters? No, there's a specific name for oh. for some of them. Yeah, don't go to him for a prescription for your scooter. He doesn't even know what it is that he could prescribe. Art, don't worry, buddy. I'll come hang out with you. But this guy. Oh, man. Too bad. All, All right. right, so we got one for Contra. I don't know if you're familiar with that video nope. game. Which is an epic video game originally on Nintendo. Original Nintendo, NES. But does it still use them goofy controllers? No, it was the stuff? original pad, and that was the classic code. The up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. And if you played two-player like my brother and I always did, yeah. it was select start. All right. And so, that gave you the extra 30 lives. Oh, Sierra game. That's funny. That's back, that is from my history. Now I know Space Quest. That's, I was already gone by then, though. Art, I left in 1984, so Space Quest was... He had already retired. Yeah, it already... Well, Got fired, but, you know, one potato, potato. So, but yeah, that's funny that you remember it was a Sierra game. So it was online, and then it became Sierra games, and then. Uh, Thought we got one for Sierra Atari online. basketball as well. Atari basketball, that was great. That was right up there with Pong. It was nice. So, um, anyway, it's uh, yeah. So I think we've established a few things. Bug assaults are cool. Jeeps are cool. Tacos we're still not sure about because <laughs> you put a locking tailgate on a truck that doesn't even have a cover for the bed. It just makes no sense. It, it keeps then, people from stealing the tailgate. Yeah, that's a good thing. you got a truck <laughs> that people want to steal your tailgate. Awesome. So um, we're going to have fun on the track. We're going to have fun with cars. We really hope the Thermal Club lets us come back and uh, play some more with our friends at True Speed. Um, a lot of great stuff. Looking forward to the season this year. And if you guys, again, if you've got a cool toy, send it to us. We'll play with it. We'll try to break it, admittedly. We'll see what we can do with it. Um, and then we'll go out and have a good time. But um, there is, I think that's pretty much everything for today. But I got one final question. Fire away. And I'm not a social media guy. So I don't know if it's a meme, if it's a trend, or whatever this is. But I've been looking online, and there's all these pictures of beer aisles just empty all the way down except corona so does the corona <laughs> beer really give you coronavirus i mean the, why didn't they just get rid of it in the first place if that's the problem the corona beer is not affiliated with coronavirus in fact it's completely separate and totally safe to drink in uh, moderation of course but when you look at some of the headlines that are coming out on uh, the news or social media, you will see that Mexico has actually shut down Corona manufacturing. So before well, you crack... They said it was non-essential activity. So. But before you crack a Corona, you may want to consider the implications that that may actually be a collector's item in the future. Uh, well, I'll tell you what might be a collector's item. So if you do send us a cool toy and you win, get a cool toy sticker that you can use on your product. Cool toy shirt and we'll send you one of these... Cool, cool toys mugs. And now that that's all done, and since we found out that Corona's safe, I happen to have here a couple of future collector's items. So, can I help you open yours? I got an uh, opener here in my. Oh man, you know I carry my own bottle opener everywhere I go. <sighs> Dude, that's just wrong. <laughs> I should have had you do it. Lime. Of course. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> uh, well, cheers, sir. It's the end of the show. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Until next week, thanks for watching Cool Toys. <laughs>